The following is an address to the nation by Minister for Education and Human Resource Development, the Honorable Franca Bernadine. Fellow citizens, good evening. I want to talk today about several aspects of our education program, but mostly about the refocusing of our school curriculum and the lengthening of our school day to reflect this refocus. But before I do so, I would want to take the opportunity to comment briefly on two matters the school feeding program and the TA Marichaux Community College. With respect to the school feeding program, I want to dissipate any rumors about decisions being taken with regard to this program. It would not have been wise to interrupt the program during the school year to make changes. When school closes, however, the holiday months would be used to review the program to obtain public suggestions and make the required changes. Let me assure you that people losing their jobs as a result of this is not a likely reality. We would like to incorporate all into the system, but in a more efficient way. With respect to TA Marichaux Community College, this is our premier institution for tertiary education. We are also fortunate to have the St. George's University to assist us in the education of our people. The future of tertiary education in Grenada is closely associated with TAMCC, and so it is a very important part of our system. I will be meeting with the staff of the college during the month of June to chart its way forward as we resolve to provide tertiary educational opportunities for all. The World Bank Country Study of February 2008 school and work in the Eastern Caribbean tells us, and I quote, based on the findings, the report argues that the education system is not adequately preparing young people for the new skilled jobs. It goes on to tell us that economic transformation in the Eastern Caribbean increases the demand for skills, which creates both great opportunities and some risks. For example, since 1980, the service industry has been the most important source of growth in the organization of Eastern Caribbean state countries. 79% is the share of the gross domestic product, the GDP, produced by the service economies in the OECS islands. 79% is also the share of expected new hires, new jobs, in one of our OECS territories, St. Kitts and Nevis, and is taken in the year 2006, and it's in the tourism industry. 41% represents a share of business firms in Grenada rating workers with lack of skills and education as a severe obstacle for their competitiveness, which indicates that the education and training systems are not grooming school leavers and the unemployed for available jobs. So that having received up to 11 years of formal education, school leavers often have no diploma or marketable skills. These young people can take an exceptionally long time to find employment. The World Bank estimates this to be 14 months on an average between leaving school and getting a first job in the OECS. It may be as long as two years. This indicates that the difficulties school leavers face in the transition from school to work is a reality. When one looks at the reasons for the long time gap between leaving school and getting a job, the World Bank indicates four reasons. One, some students struggle with the daily use of the basic skills of reading, writing, and arithmetic even difficulty with the Caribbean Examinations Council English and Math. Two, many have great difficulties demonstrating behavioral life skills that are valued by employers, such as good work attitudes, teamwork, proactiveness, critical thinking, and communication. A third reason, most school leavers have not acquired professional skills linked to a specific career or a technical skill in demand, such as computer skills. Four, few will receive labor market training. 
Service research shows that employers are more likely to offer training to highly skilled workers. Those that do receive training are sometimes trained in areas of relatively low demand, such as sewing and cake decorating. Our problem, therefore, is that we are producing young people who are not attuned to the job market. We in Grenada have the most severe skills gap in the Western Hemisphere, that is, the gap between the product of the education system and the marketability of our young people. I draw your attention to Exhibit 4, a graph on Grenada skills gap, and 5, education, the ultimate poverty fighter. Okay. The countries are listed across the bottom on the horizontal axis, with Grenada on the far left of the screen, followed by Guyana, Brazil, Guatemala, and other Latin American countries. The percentage is on the vertical axis going up. You see that Grenada has the highest gap. The second graph shows a series of five graphs. On the horizontal running across, we see the age span. On the vertical running up, we see the salaries earned. The top graph represents a person who has been to TAMCC, UWI, SGU, and other universities. The lowest graph represents the person in the EC who has not completed secondary, um, has not completed primary education. And what this is showing us is the gap between, in salary, a person who has not completed primary education and a person who has tertiary level training. There is a 324% increase in salary between those two scales. Having defined the problem, we must examine our options. We can either continue as we are, in which case we will continue to feel the economic struggle and the negative behavior attitudes of restless young people, or we can try to address the issue by introducing and heavily refocusing the curriculum to include the required personal development skills and technical skills in the school's curriculum, so as to produce a well-rounded individual who has academic skills, literacy and numeracy, good working attitudes and interpersonal skills, and at the same time has acquired technical skills for the job market in Grenada. Technical skills must be reintroduced in a much bigger way to the secondary school system and also to the primary schools. Having this great variety of options gives the young persons attending school the opportunity to develop a skill in areas in which he or she is naturally gifted. So that instead of forcing a young person along a purely academic line which may not be an area in which he is inclined or gifted, he or she is able to develop the skills and access opportunities that are equally lucrative or even more lucrative than the traditional areas for which he is taught. For example, I draw on Andre Fletcher, who has excelled in the field of cricket and has earned his first million before the age of 21. Not that money is the sole factor, but it speaks to the earning capacity of the individual. A child may therefore find himself with the opportunity to do English, mathematics, electronics, physical education or sport, music, drama, theater, and woodwork, as opposed to eight, nine, 10, or 11 purely academic subjects. Fortunately for us all, CXE has been watching the job market and remains abreast of the trends and needs of its Caribbean clientele. It has introduced CXEs in music, in dance and theater called the performing arts, in physical education and